Mac Pro 6.1 Power Consumption. Is the Mac Pro trash can good for the wallet or a cost trap energy wise? Guys, I have used Mac Pros for a long, long time. First starting with the Mac Pro 5.1, which I got used in 2018. That system works really great even today, five years later. However, it consumes more energy because the CPU is on a different nanometer process pretty large nanometer process. CPUs get better and better over time, nanometers go down, so does the energy consumption. Let's check how the Mac Pro trash can performs energy-wise. I would recommend you check the, your CPU. I have the 3.5 gigahertz six core, which is kind of entry level. And my recommendation is even if you're thinking about buying a used Mac and you wonder about how the energy consumption is or how much electricity that's gonna use, you can go to the Apple website because Apple lists that actually for every device, but I wanted to measure myself and check also how the energy changes in different use scenarios so that I can get a realistic number since Apple gives very wide ranging numbers. But the main thing that caught my attention about the Mac Pro trash can energy consumption was really the roughly 40 watt that Apple stated. So what I did, I first tried to take a, I did a closer look at the CPU with the Intel Power Gadget. And um, on sitting idle on the desk, I got numbers anywhere from 13, 15, 18 watts. Sometimes there are some background tasks. Uh, that's why there are these small peaks. But if you're using that for light tasks, maybe that Intel CPU will only use 25 watts, which is pretty good considering it's eight core Xeon. But as soon as you start to throw heavier tasks at it, like video editing or gaming, for example, whoom, the energy consumption goes up. And I measured, let's say 70 watts easily when you edit the video. Remembering in the back of your mind, this also has two Radeon Fire graphics cards, in my case, the D500s. And I would estimate that they might each also use 25 watts. So do you do the math? you easily at 120 watts, if not more, when you're doing video editing. So what I ended up doing, I did with the useful tool, I start menus. I did edit a little bit in the video editing project that I have, and then I did the export. And surprisingly, the Mac Pro 4.1 and the Mac Pro 6.1 used about the same, had the same pattern when it came to CPU utilization, each 25, 50% in the export. Now the export can slightly vary based on the codec. Uh, this is the H.264. If you're exporting ProRes, if the ProRes will do a quicker job. The CPU will, utilization will go higher, but the task will also finish earlier. That's simply due to the different codecs can utilize the CPU differently, but what if you're just on a desktop and you just want to watch a movie? Yes, this is a lot. People spend a lot of time on YouTube. I'm a YouTuber myself. I spend also a lot of time on YouTube. Or maybe I just watch a Netflix video. That would be most likely the H.264 codec. And um, I looked in the software and that came out in the iStat menus around 75 watts. However, when I measured it, it tended to be slightly higher, five, sometimes 10 watts higher. So please, if you look in iStat menus, maybe it's not capturing it 100%. So I'm estimating 85 watts for H.264 and 102 watts for ProRes. However, not a lot of people are gonna use ProRes unless you have a ProRes workflow. Uh, more importantly, I put everything together in this handy graph, which we're then gonna to use to calculate the cost for one year and for two years of usage. The red asterisk mark, that's my main point is like, why have I on average 75 watts in idle when Apple actually states 43? So I would really ask the community right here, what, how, how many watts is your Mac Pro actually using? Please leave that in the comments below because I know from the past, having used the cheese grater, their Apple's uh, rating was pretty accurate with 110 watts. It was pretty spot on. Why with the Mac Pro 6,1, the values don't match. I, I find that very perplexing. Uh, YouTube, Netflix, also an improvement. The, I really noticed when I used the Mac Pro 6.1, the Mac Pro trash can, the CPU utilization is very low as well as the graphics utilization. So, I mean, tasks like watching a YouTube video or watching Netflix, that's like, these. those are video, these systems were back in the day, they were made for video editing. So it's like no task whatsoever. 
when you actually start editing in Final Cut, that's a different story. Final Cut really uses the CPU a little bit more. It uses the graphics card and the Final Cut is also optimized to use both graphics cards at the same time. So you can quickly end up with 160, maybe even 250, uh, 240 watts if you have uh, specialized plugins. Guys, to my surprise, these systems from uh, Mac Pro 4.1 and 6.1, they performed energy-wise almost the same. So they used a lot of energy, which how much are you actually gonna pay? Guys, I took the US, I took Texas as an example. Texas right now, I seems to have only nine, 10 cents uh, energy cost. That's really, really low. People would love to have that in Europe. In Germany, we are at 40 cents and the tendency is rising. So if you're living in California and you're paying 20 cents or 25 cents, <laughs> wait, it can double again. I'm thinking. <laughs> if, if you go down that eco route that we do in Germany, you will end up there as well. And uh, yeah, I mean, you see, I would estimate uh, from the usage scenarios, the numbers that we just gathered, that most people will probably be using between 80 or 140 watts. So in Europe, that would be 100, 200 dollars a year. That's, it's not cheap, but it's reasonable. However, if you, you consider that over a three year period, it starts to add up and that used Mac Pro, if you buy that, um, I got mine for about around $500. If I put in a two terabyte NVMe, I'm at 600, uh, give or take. So I have 600 for the machine with a small upgrade of the two terabyte NVMe. And I have another 600 uh, worst case and operating cost. So I might, uh, if I use that over a three year period, end up maybe with uh, one, two in, in total cost. And uh, that's my conclusion. If you're living in a low energy country, a low energy cost country, I mean, it's kind of obvious if you think about it. These systems, it doesn't matter whether you use some more energy, but if you're living in Europe, then I'm really thinking, if it wouldn't be for the high upfront cost, because the Mac Studio, uh, we have to pay two, four. Uh, if you do a few upgrades, you quickly at $3,000. So, mm, Okay, then I'll spend $3,000 upfront. If you would calculate that over a three or four or five year period, then maybe yes. But guys, I just wanted to share these numbers. If you wanna know more about the Mac Pro trash can, other upgrade tutorials such as CPU, NVMe, what you must know about NVMe upgrades and so on, subscribe, look at the playlist below and I see you on the next video.